Hello and welcome everyone to this uh, workshop on numerical EMC for aerospace vehicles. We are uh, right now at the Escuela Superior uh, Ingenieros uh, at the University of Seville in Spain. And this workshop is being carried out under the framework of the HICATE project. The HICATE, HICATE stands for Hybrid Electric Regional Aircraft Dist Distribution Technologies and the purpose is to develop uh, technologies that allow uh, a more electric aircraft. Um, the first uh, uh, topic that we can cover is first, who are we? Who are who will be the presenters that you will have today? Uh, my name is Luis Diaz Angulo, and uh, me, together with Alberto Gascon and Alejandro. Manterola are uh, with the University of Granada as part of the group of, of electromagnetics. Uh, this group has a very large experience uh, in the numerical solution of electromagnetic problems. This is an experience of from more than 30 years. And uh, in the last uh, uh, years, the last 15 years, uh, we have been working mostly on EMC uh, topics. Most of our code is freely available and um, can be downloaded from this uh, link, this GitHub page, um, used freely uh, under quite uh, open licenses. The last presenter, the last presenter, Adrian Arce, is with Ellenwave, and he specializes in computational. Ellenwave specializes in computational electromagnetics uh, and uh, looks to translate the physical problems into software solutions that allow engineers to, to do their job. Uh, our focus in, in the group of electromagnetics, our focus is more academic. We develop solvers, publish papers, more, uh, we are not so focused on make the tools usable and the focus of Fallen Wave is precisely to uh, make those tools that are quite powerful but make them user friendly, so engineers don't really have to spend too much time in trying to figure out how to use them. Here uh, I'm showing a summary of uh, the, the topics we will cover. The first two, presented by me and, and Alberto Gascon, will be more theoretical and uh, will be uh, will explain the first the basic concepts behind EMC and numerical EMC, and then he will enter in more detail in one of these techniques, which uh, is the base of the solution that we are developing for the Hecate project. The last two presenters, Alberto, Alejandro and Adrián, will uh, show uh, demos in which they will open the, the program, the, the solution, and will solve uh, a couple of problems related with uh, EMC. Okay, so Let's start with the first presentation, uh, which is on numerical ENC for, for aerospace applications for, from a broad perspective. So uh, the first question we may ask is, what is EMC? Okay. Uh, EMC stands for electromagnetic compatibility, and the purpose of EMC is to warn that electrical systems do not interfere with each other. Um, in a schematic manner or in an abstract manner, we have an aggressor, a system that is creating some, some kind of electromagnetic interference, which can uh, affect a victim equipment. For this to happen, there must be a channel with which is like the, uh, the vehicle that goes from the aggressor to the victim. So EMC, uh, another way of putting it is that the MC's mission is to police electromagnetic interference. We're kind of like the security here. We try to uh, put order in the electromagnetic spectrum so there are no uh, unintended uh, interferences between the equipment. Um, the ways to do that are many and depend heavily on the specific problem that, that you want to solve. But for instance, in some cases when you are dealing with radiation, Imagine that the, the aggressor is a system that is created a radio frequency interference that is affecting the victim. 
then maybe one possible solution is simply to uh, maybe move the victim, put the victim somewhere else. So in that place, there is no uh, interference at all. Or sometimes you need to do more uh, other things, like maybe install some kind of shield on the victim, some Faraday cage or, or something, and, and that protects the victim from that particular frequency. Other times can be can mean that you put some kind of filter in the antenna, so those uh, specific frequencies are, are filtered out and they are not present in the whole in the whole environment. As I say, there are many ways of enforcing uh, EMC. Another uh, concept that we will use. Uh, uh, and is that EMC can be seen as having many levels, many different levels. You can study EMC, and, and that's one reason why EMC means sometimes different things for different people is because they are used to think about EMC from, from this per their perspective, the perspective of their uh, particular job. And then, well, they think EMC maybe is something that only happens at component level. But they probably know that it happens at different levels, but they, their focus is component level. So an example of this uh, uh, component level EMC could be could could be observed at, at a PCB. So in a PCB, uh, you may have some component. Maybe this one. I have no idea if this is true or not. But let's assume it's this one, and this one is creating some kind of uh, radio frequency interference or radio frequency emission that couples into maybe this other component uh, and it uh, and, and at that that frequency maybe you can have several channels maybe one is uh, simply a conductive path through the through the tracks of the pcb maybe there is no direct ohmic path from the aggressor to the victim but there is some uh, capacitive coupling with other tracks that end up in in that in that pin, or sometimes maybe inductive, or sometimes maybe directly uh, radio frequency. So the idea here is that uh, for us at this level, what happens in these literal black boxes is not really uh, very important. We only care about uh, the channel, let's say, the, the, mo the proper modeling of the channel. And the way that we will include the information of these black boxes is through uh, specifications typically given by the manufacturer, like maybe the maximum uh, allowed uh, levels to create a logical signal in this chip, or maybe the uh, typical emissions that are produced by this uh, 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 chip here. Okay. So uh, the idea is that at a certain level, what happens at lower levels is uh, simplified, and you don't really care what is uh, what happens inside. But just the specifications and modeling the channel. Okay. Okay. So um, the next level that you may uh, that we might distinguish is maybe device level. So at device level. The PCBs themselves are what will be the black boxes. And in this level, maybe we the, the focus is on the interaction at, uh, from one PCB to the other, how much how much current can couple through the structure or something like that, or maybe maximum fields that can happen uh, at the other PCB when you have something in your PCB. And also maybe we are interested in modeling how much energy couples into the ports of this system. But the idea here is that we don't really will model in full detail uh, the PCBs. Maybe they are simplified uh, rather he he heavily by uh, modeling them as uh, perfect electric conductors. We can go higher and maybe at system level, the flight computer, the devices that were modeled before are now the black boxes. These are now the black boxes. And we don't really care too much about what happens inside. We simply care about maybe if one of these black boxes is creating some, uh, is introducing some electromagnetic energy that can affect other of these black boxes, or maybe there is some lightning that is hitting the, the aircraft somewhere, 
and that energy is coupling through the uh, electric electrical structure network and couples into the different uh, devices that form the, the, the system. So this will be the system level, which is maybe uh, if we are in the context of the aircraft industry, it will be simply the aircraft. And then we can distinguish maybe a higher uh, level, which is the environment level. And at the environment level, the full aircraft, not just a part or maybe not the inside of the aircraft, but the full aircraft is uh, modeled uh, as a, maybe a black box. So we don't model inside the inside of the aircraft. We are only focused on uh, getting ideas of given a, a perturbation, in this case, lining, how much energy can like couple into different parts of the aircraft, but um, in a more, much more abstract way. And then that information can be used at lower levels. Subsequently, you can also you can also go from the upper level to the lower level. Okay, so uh, specifically for the aerospace industry, probably the level that is more important is the system level. But the, you are in the end, you are kind of a, an integrator of devices. You are integrating devices, and you have to make sure that they work in a given environment. And at this system level. Um, Typically, the, the flight computer, for instance, will be given with uh, some specifications. Your antenna will be given with some specifications of the uh, maximum levels that, that can that can withhold or can emit. So, but what are typical problems of uh, EMC numerical EMC of, of EMC in airspace? Sorry. So, well, one possibility is that you want to study uh, the aircraft when it is in the uh, uh, radiated with high intensity fields here high intensity radiated fields that this can happen when the aircraft uh, goes close to maybe a radar system or uh, next to a lightning event something like that. Uh, that can create uh, fields inside the aircraft and to understand and to model those fields is important Another situation can be to, that you need to study the uh, effects of lining in the aircraft. And we typically are focused on indirect effects. Indirect, indirect effects are uh, the kind of effects that are not, that do not produce a direct physical, let's say, visible damage like uh, burns or, uh, or, or uh, formations in the structure but they produce maybe magnetic fields and currents that can affect the equipment. So these are typically uh, categorized as lining in their defects. But there are many more like antenna placement. You may worry about the what is the optimal place to, to put an antenna which avoids uh, interference with other things. Uh, of course, internal EMC uh, between different uh, devices that form the system. Sometimes electric, electrostatic discharge, as you can imagine, an, an aircraft uh, is uh, undergoes a lot of uh, electrical uh, charge charging due to triple electric freight with the atmosphere. So this can also be quite critical. In the second uh, presentation, we will show uh, a typical an example of a problem that arises in the Hikati project. In, uh, as I mentioned, the Hikati project is related with make the aircraft more electric. And uh, to do that, you basically want to incorporate batteries and electric motors and things like that. And to do that, you need to connect batteries with motors through uh, an electrical network. This electrical network uh, is typically uh, supporting high voltages. And of course, this goes close to uh, another networks that may be related with sensors, which typically have are very sensitive. So um, a problem that is worrying sometimes is that is this high voltage network going to affect my sensors in some way, for instance? So in the second lecture, we will uh, show uh, the software that we are developing to solve this kind of issue. Okay, so. This is about EMC in general. So next question is, what is numerical EMC? Uh, well, in simple terms, numerical EMC is simply 
the use of computational electro electromagnetics methods to solve EMC problems. Okay, so we will go back to to our problem uh, now in a little bit more of detail. We have the source, we have the victim, and we have the channel, which is in more detail now. Okay, so as we say, typically we will consider the source and the victim as black boxes. We will they are only giving us like emission data or maximum uh, sub, uh, levels that they can uh, undergo. Then we, we what remains is then the channel. And the channel, the electromagnetic energy can couple in, in several ways. Conduction, electric conduction, uh, inductive effect, capacitive effects of radiation. And each of these uh, phenomena can be traced back to uh, the Maxwell equations, which is what govern, which is what governs all the electromagnetic fields. Okay. So, for instance, conductive effects. If we go to Maxwell equations, probably we only need this term. This is the most relevant term here. Maybe this one also the sources, but possibly this one is 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 enough for a purely conductive phenomena. Okay. If we are with capacitive, okay, we we'll, we we need to incorporate the fields and we need to solve a, an electrostatic problem. Uh, Laplace equation, etc., and then uh, we will also need to incorporate this equation. If we need inductive effects, then maybe we need to model the problem using these terms here, which uh, are the significant ones for a quasi-static uh, approach, in which the the currents can create magnetic fields and they can induce uh, secondary fields in other parts. And if radiation is uh, the most important component of the problem, then we need to go with the cool, ma cool mass for equation. So the idea here is that uh, different phenomena probably need different equations, which in the end will mean that we need to solve them with different numerical methods. Okay, so the key idea is that for different things, you probably will need different numerical methods. Okay, so the next question uh, is therefore, which method is a, is is good to use? Well, there is no, as I said, there is no single method which is valid for for every problem. And here we will comment a little bit on some of the possibly most uh, relevant uh, categories that you need to consider. Consider. So the first one is electrical size. Electrical size is a is a concept. Uh, it's basically the quotient between physical length and the minimum wavelength. Um, therefore, it's an adimensional quantity. And this parameter will decide basically if your problem is electromagnetically, from the electromagnetic point of view, is a large problem or a small problem. Then also something to consider is the model complexity. For instance, it's not the same to model a, 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 an antenna, which is somewhat simple. Uh, uh, geometry or a human head. A human head has a lot of complexity inside. There are little things that can, uh, that are surrounded of, of other little things, all immersed in a in, in a fluid. Or, so it's quite complex. You have bones. You have, but the complexity is also an important factor. Another thing is is my problem. Are, are, am I interested in a range of frequencies or in maybe a single frequency? Is, there, is it very resonant? Is my problem very resonant? Maybe the last one is, is my problem linear or I have nonlinear devices? Okay, so let's go with the first uh, item or the first two items, which is the electrical size. This image is taken from, from the web page of Altair. And I like it because it shows that for large electrical sizes, probably you are not modeling Maxwell equations at all, almost, or you are simplifying them greatly. And at that, uh, at very large electrical sizes, maybe what you have, or the best approximation you have is simply to consider rays, ray tracing. It's more like optic problem. It's an optic problem rather than a, a purely, let's say, low frequency electromagnetic problem. And so in that case, maybe, the best approach is the unified theory of diffraction or physical objects. And if you go lower and lower, maybe you can now enter to model Maxwell equations properly. And a good 
method could be a method of moment. Uh, but here, the price that you are paying is that uh, you are sacrificing some of the complexity of Maxwell equations. For instance, here you are in frequency domain. As I said, here you are doing basically ray tracing. If you have higher complexity, like uh, non-linearities or high inhomogeneities, maybe the methods that you can use are uh, FDTD or finite element method. Um, finite element methods is typically used in frequency domain, and FDTD is uh, typically in domain. But the, 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 they cannot handle very large electrical sizes, but the good thing is that they can like handle uh, higher complexities. Okay. Um, so, another question you have to decide. Uh, is better if I use a time domain tool or as, should I use a frequency domain tool? Well, basically, uh, time domain is useful and probably better if you uh, need to uh, you need to obtain a continuous broadband of frequencies. So at that situation, uh, time domain is better, basically because of the uh, Fourier transform, the Fourier theorem, which says that as you have a time domain signal, uh, not periodic time domain signal, then uh, that gives you a continuous uh, result. If you need a transient, then th this will be perfect. Also, if you need to uh, make a movie which shows causality in which you see the energy coming from some place and moving into another place, and you need to visualize how it happens from the origin, from the source to the victim, then time domain is also a very good tool. Uh, also, at the moment that you need uh, nonlinear devices, you are basically restricted to time domain only. And an example of a nonlinear device can be really simple. is a switch, simply a switch. At the moment that you turn on a switch, basically that is nonlinear and it doesn't have a, a uh, linear, uh, it cannot cannot be modeled with linear uh, as a linear component. Uh, frequency domain is good uh, if you need only maybe one or two frequencies or, or a set of frequencies. It can be a hundred, but if you don't need a continuous range of frequencies, frequency domain can be a good approach. Or also, if the problem is highly resonant. Uh, and for instance, you are uh, interested in the radiation pattern of an antenna. If the problem is highly, highly resonant, frequency domain is also a better approach because time domain fails there uh, as it will need a very long time to model the, 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 the problem because the energy is confined uh, during a very long period of time. So if the quality, if you, are, if you want to know the quality factor of an antenna and uh, then Possibly frequency domain is better. So for let's see a couple of examples. One example is uh, the one I put before, and we want to. So basically, we have electromagnetic interference coupling in in PCB from uh, this component into this component, and well, let's start by the electrical size, uh, and we are interested only in a single frequency. Okay. So let's start by the electrical size. We need the physical length. Well, let's say that the PCB is 20 centimeters. Uh, so for instance, uh, 3 kilohertz, if, if the frequency of interest is 3 kilohertz, then the electrical size is 2 uh, and to the, minus, to the minus 6, which is really, really small. In this situation, maybe you don't even have significant capacitive effects or inductive effects. And maybe a good option could be simply to use spikes. If you are worried about inductive effects or capacitive effects, then maybe also you can generate the, that spice model, that basic linear circuit analysis using uh, a tool called PEEC, which is partial equi element equivalent circuit. So these methods will be maybe a good choice for three kilohertz. Um, If the frequency, if the frequency that you are worried is at three megahertz, the electrical size is ten, is two to ten to the minus three, and then the the inductive effects can start to be important. You can even have some uh, radiation, uh, but 
Pro probably not much. And also you uh, will have um, um, capacitive effects. So in that circumstance, maybe a uh, quasi-static uh, finite element method is, uh, is a good choice because uh, you can directly enter the full model into a into, uh, finite element method solver and it will give you the, the, the results. If you go at higher frequencies, then uh, you will need to model radiation for much for a more sure. It will be important. And if a three gigahertz the electrical size is two, in that situation you, you need a full wave solver. You probably need to consider all terms in Maxwell equations. And then, uh, as you are only interested in a single frequency, maybe uh, finite element methods in frequency domain is is a good choice. So. The key takeaway of, of this slide is different frequencies will give you different electrical sizes and different electrical sizes will make optimal different solvers. OK, so uh, if let's move into another example. In this case, I have I'm interested also in an electromagnetic inter interference in uh, company in, in a, inside an aircraft. And in this case, the physical size is approximately five meters. And in this case, the problem is I want to find a low frequency transient. So basically, I have a transient maybe coming from one part that uh, is uh, affecting the, I want to see how that is affecting the equipment here. And this transient goes from 50 kilohertz to one gigahertz. In this case, the electrical size is a range and now it's 0 0.08 uh, to 16. So I have a, a range of electrical sizes that are relevant uh, here. Uh, also, part of the problem is that one of these subsystems has a nonlinear response, or so basically maybe there is a diode inside and, I, and, and, and while it is operating, it can, uh, the perturbation can modify the the polarization of the diode and it can the the signal that is being emitted by the device can affect the other. So this will be a really complex scenario in which I have a nonlinear response in one part. In that situation, um, you are only restricted. You are restricted to time domain. You cannot use anything else because frequency domain assumes linearity of all the components, and possibly given the electrical size. Etc. And that this time domain, probably the best tool for this case is FDTD. Find a difference in time domain. Okay, so uh, let's move to my last slide, which is simply like a conclusion on when is a good idea to use numerical EMC. Maybe not always is a is the optimal solution numerical EMC. Uh, it has a cost. You have to. You need to have a model. Of the of the system that you want to know, you need to have all components well characterized, and that may not always be the case. But in uh, in situations in which you have that, uh, numerical EMC can be a good a good approach. So when I have put only like four ballots in which I think it can be a good approach. If you are at early stages of the of the sign and you want to know like in a broad manner, the numbers that can be involved, uh, the, 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 the levels that you may obtain in different parts, then it can be of great help to with the initial uh, uh, concept conceptualization of your system. And so um, maybe we are in that situation now in Hecate, in which we are like still not electrifying the, air, the aircraft properly, but we want to know levels that you can obtain in different parts. So it's kind of an early stage. Uh, also, when prototyping of your system is expensive, uh, numerical EMC is a very good option. To develop the prototype will be very expensive, and uh, in that case, maybe nothing. The numerical cost, the cost of developing the numerical uh, model, is is irrelevant. It's neg negligible compared with the prototype. So, in that situation, you are also in a good situation to use numerical EMC. And of course, aircraft, which costs millions, is a perfect example. Also, another situation is when the testing a scenario that you are interested in, maybe it's the most typical operation scenario of your device, but at the same time, it's difficult to implement. And for instance, 
what happens with an antenna when the aircraft is flying. So I can do all this I want in ground, but the antenna pattern will change at the moment the aircraft is flying. So maybe all those tests are you know, uh, optimal, are not uh, serving for the purpose of the problem that I want to solve. And the last thing is uh, when you need to check many configurations. Each of these configurations can be expensive to implement. And the good thing also of numerical models is that it's very easy to change an antenna from one place to the other. It's really, really simple. And also, if you want to do an optimization, you want to do some algorithm of optimization, of course, you will need a lot of realizations of the problem. And do that physically is, is impossible. So if you need to uh, optimize maybe the shield that goes in a in certain uh, uh, wire, or or maybe the placement of the antenna or something like that, probably is a very good choice. Uh, numerical NC is a very good choice. So for all these reasons, numerical NC has been extensively used and is extensively used in aeronautics, and uh, probably the aeronautic industry is one of the most that has put more money specifically. For, to develop solvers that are specific for EMC. Okay, so this concludes my presentation. Thank you all for listening, and I leave you with uh, the next talk uh, given by uh, Alberto Gascon.